Assalamu alaikum, this is Dr. Hasna and today we will study the dorsum of the hand. In the dorsum of the hand, let's talk about the layers first. It is first formed by a skin and the skin is very loose in your uh, dorsum of the hand. Moreover, we'll talk about the next layer, the superficial fascia. Now, the superficial fascia of the skin contains the dorsal venous plexus. This is a plexus of veins that basically uh, drain the digits. Then we have the arterial dorsal digital arteries. Apart from this, in the superficial fascia lie the cutaneous nerves. The cutaneous nerves that supply your back of the hand, which we've already discussed in my other videos. The lateral three distals are being supplied, lateral three and a half distals are being supplied by the median nerve and uh, medial two and a half are being supplied by the ulnar nerve and the lateral two and a half by the radial nerve. Today, we will talk about the dorsal venous plexus and the dorsal digital blood supply of the dorsum of the hand. Apart from this, we have deep fascia. In the deep fascia, we have a modification at the wrist called the extensor retinaculum. We'll discuss this separately. Dorsal digital expansion that lies on your digits in the back of your digits that we'll discuss soon. So let's get started firstly with the superficial fascia and the dorsal digital blood supply and the venous plexus. Let's begin the discussion of the dorsal venous plexus of veins. So as you all know that basically veins take blood to the heart. So veins will not have branches, rather they'll have tributaries, meaning the veins will basically be draining, will be going in a reverse motion than the arteries. As you know that arteries basically supply, but the veins will drain. So there are three dorsal metacarpal veins, one, two, and three. These are formed, they're not branches, they're not giving branches, but they're rather they're formed. The three dorsal metacarpal veins, these are formed by tributaries of the adjacent sides of the index, middle, ring, and little finger. How? This way. So blood from these fingers is going to form the three dorsal metacarpal veins. These dorsal metacarpal veins will combine to form an arch. The lateral side of this arch, which is this side, and the medial side of the arch. There are two sides of this arch. Now, what happens with these arches? The arches, on the medial side of the arch, there is a digital vein that comes from the little finger's medial side to join this uh, medial side of the arch. And this, at this point, it forms, this vein becomes or carries the name of the basilic vein or the vein of the medial side, the basilic vein. This will wrap around the medial border of the wrist and go to come in the front of the forearm, all right? And on the lateral side of the arc, digital vein from the lateral side of the index finger, two digital veins basically coming from the uh, entire thumb that are basically draining the entire thumb, join this lateral side of the arc to form what is called the cephalic vein or the vein of the lateral side. The cephalic vein will enter the anatomical snuff box and from the anatomical snuff box, it winds around the border of the wrist, lateral border of the wrist to ply in the front of the forearm. So this was the story of the dorsal venous plexus of veins, which lies in the dorsum of your hand. And basically it tells how the basilic and cephalic veins come into existence. If this is the hand, it is basically uh, what is happening is if you remember the radial and ulnar artery in the front of the forearm gave branches called the dorsal carpal branches. Each of them gave the dorsal carpal branches. These branches formed an arc on the carpal area of the dorsum of the wrist because carpal and dorsal. So these formed the uh, arc on the dorsum of your wrist and from this arc came three dorsal metacarpal arteries. The three dorsal metacarpal arteries then supplied the adjacent sides of the index, middle, ring and little finger. How? By giving branches to the adjacent sides of each. Yet again, this part is left and this and this is left. So what happened was, if you remember, the radial artery entered the snu anatomical snuff box from the front of the forearm. It entered the anatomical snuff box. And if you remember, I told you that it gave a branch to the lateral side of the thumb, after which it gave it the first dorsal metacarpal artery. 
and the first dorsal gave supply to the adjoining sides of the thumb and the index finger. So this is the first dorsal metacarpal. This is the second, third and fourth that are derived from the dorsal carpal arc. And apart from this, another digital artery is given to the medial side of your little finger. So that's all about the venous and arterial supply or the entire blood supply of the dorsum of the hand.